What did your family and friends think about your decision to become a professional gamer? What do they think now? There's not really a plan to be a professional gamer because when I was coming up and trying to be pro, there wasn't, you know, really professional gaming. I didn't want, I didn't even think about becoming a professional gamer. It was pressing to help me, but I was so scared to tell my father. My mom was pretty well receptive to it. My dad, who was kind of more old fashioned, had to think about it, I guess, but I'm pretty sure my mom convinced him. So when I was young, my family definitely was not about this gaming stuff. They wanted me to, you know, pursue my education, pursue school and handle like that standard path. Uh, they were a little hesitant in the beginning until I started like making a few hundred bucks and they were like, oh, that's nice. My mom supported all the way. She, t she helped us get plane tickets to our first event where we got last in. My friends thought it was crazy. I mean, I always, I told my friends, yo, I'm going to America. I'm going to go play a video game. But luckily it all paid off and everyone thinks now that, hey, that's a sick job. And for me personally, it's a super blessed spot to be in and it's my dream job. Now they're even more supportive. They, they always watch my games. They are in Europe, so they stay up late watching all the games. They, they love watching all the time. My father watches everything. He watches the flank, every CDL show. He watches it all. Now they love it. What's the funniest thing that has happened to you and teammates this season? I have, I have one, but I don't know if I want to put it in the video. <laughs> Selium, when we were doing the walkouts, he was the first one to go out. Selium walked off stage early, like he was like, like he was, like he was the best in the game. They called out saying this, the Atlanta phase. I think he walked out thinking that he was supposed to go out and he wasn't. And he walked to like the front of the stage and then he like stood there for a second. No one told him anything and he came back like 30, 10 seconds later and it was the funniest. It was just funny. Getting last at our home major. That was not good. That was really bad. So we did so bad. You just got to laugh it off and move forward. This, this might not be funny to people who don't know Ben. So he always drinks apple orange juice, Ben, every meal. And he's got orange juice with like the carton with a straw. And then he's got his glass of water and he's literally feeding this orange juice with a glass of water like saying, are you thirsty? There's a specific moment when we walk on stage and we'd get sat down and Bans would go in the in-game chat and he'd be like, yo, I think it was against LAG at the, the last event. He was like, yo, Asim, look over here. <laughs> he was like doing little kiss faces to him across the stage, weird faces. <laughs> Who are you looking at? Sure, the Who are you looking at? Are you, are you looking at Huke? Not dread if you are. <laughs> See, bro. When was the last time I touched grass? Uh, personally, it'd have to be probably like a week or two. Uh, I'm planning on touching some soon because somebody's got to mow it. Touching, like actual, like touching it with my hands, like, I don't even know. I mean, obviously everyone's been on it, but actually, I'd, I'd say maybe like three, four years back when I played football, like, it's been a while. That's actually a good question. I actually haven't in a, in a long time. Wow, that's actually crazy, wow. The last time I touched grass was yesterday. I mean, I, I, I Ubered here if that counts. I touched grass. When did I do it? I think I went, I went to Florida after major two. Probably like 30 minutes ago because I walk here every day. I live in Florida, so it's very nice weather. Um, I think I touched grass over there. I have to walk to the city every day. It's like a 10 minute walk. It's like pretty nice weather here in like Florida. Florida sun, nice weather, nice fresh air. So 30 minutes ago. In Minnesota, if I try to go touch grass, it would just be snowy and cold all over and I get frostbite. Um, when I moved to Minnesota, it's uh, it's freezing out here. So I haven't touched grass really much out here. Yesterday, cause I have dogs, I have do puppies. It's pretty frequent here in Toronto, honestly, like going around, going for walks together. Yeah, I touch grass every day. A lot of people don't, but I do. What percent do you tip a server? Well, it depends on the service, but no matter what, I'm giving like 15% and going up to probably somewhere around 30 if I'm feeling good. You got to give them like 15 to 20 based on how the service is. Personally, I feel like you always kind of got to go to 20%. Um, I usually tip them 20 to 25% every time, usually. Where I'm from in Australia, we don't have this system. Honestly, when I first got over here, I was, I was kind of mind blown at how like they were not pressuring the tips, but I kind of understand like how it worked over here. This is controversial because in the UK, no one tips really, unless you get someone really nice. Like, uh, you just don't tip. It's just not a thing. Like in Denmark, they get paid more like than the actual minimum. It's, I think the normal things is like 15, 20, 25. I usually just go 20. I'd say probably like the 20%. A very decent amount. I'd probably say over 20%. I've usually always tipped on the higher side just because I feel like servers are always going through it from like day to day and I feel like they even get like customers that are rude to them, whatever. So usually I tip like pretty well, like 
30 percent i know it's, that's like one tough job and i know that they go through it from like day to day give them some respect and uh, help help out with their cash flow where there are their hard work and uh their dedication to their craft mid-season predictions who is winning champs will listen from the preseason predictions to now i'm not changing my answer no matter how rough um, our last stage has been i'm going with la thieves the 2020 2022 cdl champions mid-season prediction who's winning champs the seattle surge i'd have to say seattle surge my mid-season prediction for the winner of champs is the florida Mineers. obviously i'd say toronto the team that's currently in 10th place the minnesota rocker will be winning champs this year i think we are winning champs well i hope we do um if not then i would probably say you know any teams that are on the top right now phase or optic I mean, the obvious answer right now with, with who's been most consistent, I'd say I'd say face. Like, if we're excluding us, because I, I genuinely think we could win champs easily. I want to say us. We're the only team that's gone in the finals both times. I mean, I'm going to have to go with us just because I feel like we've been the most consistent team throughout the year thus far. And even though we haven't won um, the first or second tournament, I still feel like we're in contention each time. And, you know, I feel like as soon as we figure it out, we'll be winning them. So I'm going to say us. I would want to hope to say it's us, but uh, I would say probably Toronto, just because I like them. I have full faith that we can win champs. I'm not giving myself bad juju. We're getting 12, okay? And then who's winning champs? Legion.